Well, hello there, friends. So today what we're gonna be working on is this rear engine cover, or sometimes they call it a rear deck for a boat. So this uh, cover here has seen its better days. What happens is this vinyl, it gets old, it gets brittle, and it starts to split, usually where it's been sewn or where there's been stitched before, like you can kind of see right here, how it just split. You know, a lot of people, they walk on, on this when they get into a boat or on the boat or they stand on it. And that puts a lot of pressure on this old vinyl, old brittle stuff. So right there where the, it's sewn is already perforated. So that's the first place it's gonna fail. So this customer here, he's decided that he wants an all new cover which is what I always recommend. Um, the last one I did, the guy just wanted me to re-sew some stitching that came apart. And really it's the same amount of labor because the whole cover has to come off as uh, same amount of labor as making a new one as far as installing the cover. But what I'm gonna show you today is how to actually make a duplicate of what we have here. So here we go. So the first thing that I do is I go around and I do all my marks, my reference marks. So what I do is wherever there's like an intersection like this is where we usually mark it. And then also where there's no intersection, but I wanna make sure that I'm putting it back together in the right place. I put these marks here, one in the middle and usually on corners. So you'll see right here where there's an intersection right here and I marked the intersection as well as the corner. So I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna do that on each one of these. And something I just noticed, you can probably see it right there, where the seam is high on the right side here and it goes down and it doesn't really match the seat, or it doesn't match the, the cover here, the shape of the cover. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change that pattern and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mark a line on that edge. And we'll, we'll make it a better cover, better than what it was before. So it's going to change that pattern just a little bit. But the end result will be a better pattern because if I duplicated this and it fit like this with the new one everybody would say oh look it look what he did he didn't do a very good job so I don't want people to say that about me so we'll just continue here you can see these intersections there's one right here we'll mark that because it's going to help us put it back together later so where there's a, a spance like this one here what I usually do is I'll put one or I'll put two marks, reference marks here. That way I know exactly what goes back together. This one here is a long one. You can see how long that is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put probably three marks for that one. That way I know where that goes back together. And I will do the same for this one right here. You can see I, I put some already. I put them in the corners, one in the middle corner. So right here, I'll just put one here to match it in the middle. And you can see right here, there's an intersection where this seam here ends right there. So I'll mark that. And what else we got? Um, I think I'll do these ones, you know, do the corners, do the same thing here, that one actually goes over that, oh that's weird, look what they did there, okay, mark the corner there, and I think that's it, now I'm going to start taking this cover apart so here we go if you've ever seen any of my other videos you'd see that there's a couple different ways of taking the seams apart what you could do is you could just take a razor blade like this and this is one method I actually let's do technique number 
675. So what technique number 675 is, is to use the, the razor blade and just cut right next to the seam. It's probably the fastest way, right? Time is money. And we will just cut it right on the seam. Later on when we go to make the new pattern, we just add that 3 8 inch back that we cut out. Okay, so that's that method. So the next technique is technique number 676, which is to use something like what I have here is my box cutter that I grind down with a grinder to get that serrated edges. This is Lucille. Lucille, my box cutter. So what you do with this is you try to pop the seam. You can see once you get that going like that, then it becomes a lot easier. Because now I'm using two hands instead of one. But as you can see, this method here does take a little bit longer. So this is the method that you'll want to use if you have to save the vinyl. Because all you really want to do is just pop the threads. But if you're not saving the vinyl, I would I would stay with a technique number 675. So that way, you move along a lot faster. So I'm going to opt for the razor blade method so that way I can make some good progress here. So technique number 222 is when I go to take something apart like I did this boat seat with multiple panels, multiple seat panels, this is a puzzle that's already been solved. The reason being is because when I take it apart, I don't take it totally apart. I leave it connected just like that. So there's no guessing, right? Because how much time are you going to spend trying to remember where what part went where? And you know what? You're going to lose a bunch of time. So, you know, to keep things moving along on your project really nice. Just when you go to take the pieces apart, leave them connected just like that. That way you can use this here to refer back to when it comes time for you to put something back together again. So you can also probably see here where I made my marks just like you saw me do earlier. Here's a good example right here. So my marks are right here. So when I go to sew these two pieces back together again, I match up these two marks. You see that? So there's no guessing. Never want to have guessing because guessing will cost you money. Fast forwarding a little bit, you can see here that I cut everything up with the razor blade method. So you can see here where my marks would line up. And I go back to sew everything back together again after I make my new patterns. Here's a good look at the way the listings are, are put together. So usually what you'll do is you'll remove like one of the paths like this. And this re reveals the listing. This is what pulls the cover down to give it this 3D shape. So everywhere it's sucked in like this here, you know that there's going to be a listing in there. But then, of course, the people that are experienced would know that. But sometimes people, they ask me these questions. So here we go.
Next is drawing out the pattern. So being that I cut this with a razor blade, what I need to do is I need to add in that extra 3 eighths of an inch again that we're losing. So I come out on the outside here. Because I'm on white vinyl, I'm using a pencil because I can't use white chalk on white vinyl because you can't see your mark. So I just use a pencil adding in that extra three-eighths of an inch that we're missing. Mark, I put my marks here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that with all of these patterns now. And I'm not going to bore you guys with all of that. So you'll see what's next after this. This is a tip for you. Not necessarily a technique, but as far as uh, cutting out patterns, usually what I do is I start out with the biggest pieces first. That's what I take out of the roll, or the largest pieces, so that way um, the smaller pieces will take the, the rest of what you haven't used so far. It's better to do that than to need a big giant piece of vinyl, and then you started cutting out all the small patterns first, and then you don't have enough material because you used it all for the little pieces and not the big piece. So anyway, what I do is after marking and cutting, uh, what I do is I take my Sharpie and I will mark it like that, and then I'll also mark it on the back side like that. So that way, when you're sewing it up, you'll have your marks. Normally I do this with two hands again. But anyway, uh, mark, the, mark the front and, and mark the back. Let's see. So the back would be right there. Yep. Another thing I wanted to show you, when I mentioned about adding material back in again, you can see here where I added in the extra material because I cut it off with a razor blade. So this is the example right here. You can see right here, if I would have took it apart on the stitch and made my pattern, but you see I cut it with a razor blade. so. This is what I'm talking about. I'm adding in this extra material here to make up for this one. That's not there anymore. There's another one right here that I could show you. So that's the one right there. Pattern would be about right there. So that's what I'm adding back in again is this one right there. And you could see it right there. Now you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Well, I laid the pieces up back onto the engine cover here so that way I can get some kind of idea of where I need to start, where pieces go together where, which pieces get a top stitch, which pieces don't. So this should give me a pretty good idea. So. Looks to me like I'm going to be doing this in two pieces. So from here, from here back will be one side. From here this way will be another side. So I'm going to go ahead and sew up all these pieces here first. Sew up all these pieces here second. And then I'll be joining the two right here all the way across.
Okay, so I'm making some progress here. So I have the two major components sewn up. So then this is the one component here is the front. What I'm calling the front. And then this here is the second part, which I'm calling the back. So you can see there where they're not connected. That's what's next. You go pee pee, honey bulls. Honey bulls. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Let's go. This is what it looks like three and three quarter. So I'm going to go ahead and make a three and three quarter strip. I'm going to mark it, cut it, and then we get to sew on the listings. So it's real important to take the original width of, of the listing. You want to duplicate that. Okay, so that's next. Technique number 47 is what you're looking at right here. What is that? Well, it's an old blanket. When I go to put something together, it's usually vinyl, like motorcycle seats or um, even car seats or anything else that can be damaged by laying it directly on a wood table. What I do is I insulate that with a old blanket. And not only that, but something heavy like this, it's easier to rotate on that blanket. And what'll happen is, I, I guess what the thing is, is if there's like a staple or something on top of the wood here and you lay the vinyl directly on top of that you can damage the vinyl so that's why I use the old blanket so that way I don't get any damage when I'm working on something this big and heavy now it's time for the install so what I do is I kind of lay it over where it's supposed to be we're going to start on our first listing which is right here so what happens is, you can see here, that the tighter you put the listing, lo the lower that this is going to go. So you're going to want to adjust that. You don't want it to be too loose, and you don't want it to be too tight. So that's kind of what we want it to look like right there. So then, take the staple gun one right there always 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 check your work you don't want to get halfway through this put in a hundred staples and find out that it didn't go right so as far as staples go for marine and motorcycle applications anything that's going to be like exposed to weather this is what I use here on my staple gun you can pick these up at Lowe's or Home Depot. But you see right there? Stainless. So they cost double what regular staples cost. But that's really what you're going to want to use there. Because you want happy customers. You don't want them coming back at you later because you have rusted staples. Anyway. We'll just continue. This right here. Check your work. Looks pretty good. So we're just going to continue on all the rest of the listing here. You know, don't want to bore you guys with that. So I'll be right back. So all that's really necessary when you're putting your staples in to the listing is about every four or five inches is fine. That's all you really need. You see that right there? About every four or five inches or so 
give or take. So anyway, that's all that's really needed. Some guys, they'll put like a staple every inch. And that's not really that necessary when it comes to listing. After you're finished with your listing, next is to reinstall the phone. So just put the phone back in its original position. So this piece has two listings. So we're, we're going to do the same thing. Set this one where it belongs. I usually do the ends first, then I fill in the middle later. Next is putting the foam back in after you put all the listing in. Put the foam back in its original location. So I have seen evidence that so I have seen evidence that this is probably going to be the third cover for this engine cover here. So the heat gun will allow you to warm up the vinyl that way you get some kind of stretch out of it. And it'll help you take out your wrinkles. So if you ever wondered how to use a heat gun on vinyl. You can uh, see the video that I have about how not to burn your vinyl with a heat gun. So warm it up real good. Now once it's warmed up, you'll be able to pull on it. Make sure that the seam right here is nice and straight. That it doesn't look like the Dixie Highway. After I attach it all the way around, 
I'm going to be putting the dust cover back on. So in this particular case, there's holes here for his brackets. So I'm going to make sure that those line up again. And I'll just reattach this. So I'll be doing that all the way around. And then after that, I will be attaching his wire on back on again. So that's what it'll look like after I put some staples in there. And then basically it's going to be done after that. So I'm just going to keep on working here. Not going to bore you guys with that long drawn out scenes.